Hey guys, I'm gonna show you how to make this double exposure in Photoshop. And if you guys are not already, make sure you subscribe to our channel so you don't miss our future videos. Drop a like if this video is helpful for you and make sure you comment if you have any questions, we're happy to help. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. So the first step is to open your base picture in Photoshop. So for this picture, we're gonna start with a silhouette that we took. So we're going to just go ahead and open it in Photoshop. All right, so this is the starting picture. And then the next step is going to be just to drag and drop the next picture that you're going to overlay inside the silhouette into Photoshop. So just dropping that in and that will create a new layer over here. So now you have both of those images. I'm gonna go ahead and unlock the base one. So the first step is in Photoshop is going to be to reposition this new, the, the second photo here so that it's where you want it inside of the silhouette. So to do that, I'm going to drop the fill of this layer to, let's just say 50%. So now I can see where it is in relation to the silhouette. So I'm gonna want it probably right about there. The problem now though, is that uh, there is not enough of the picture to fill the edges of the frame here on this side, a little bit over here and on the top. So I'm gonna have to expand that. Now, if we took a wider shot, we wouldn't run into that issue, but I'll just show you what we do when we run into a scenario like this, where we have a picture we wanna use for double exposure, but it's just not wide enough to fill the frame. So I'm gonna start off by, first I'm just gonna bump the fill back up to 100 so we can see. And I'm going to go over to the rectangular select tool. And I'm just gonna go ahead and select most of this and I'm gonna inverse the selection. So I'm gonna go up to select, inverse. So now I've selected everything else on the outside here. And I'm just gonna do generative fill to fill in those edges. It's gonna give me a few options that I can choose from. And this is just AI basically filling in what it thinks should be there. So you can see that option looks pretty good. I, I probably don't even need to look at the others, but. I think that one's the best. There's not really much difference between the three. So I'm gonna go ahead and go with that option. So um, now, you know, the edges are filled, so that'll work well for the double exposure. So I'm just going to, actually I like that one a little better. So I'm, I'm just going to merge these two layers together. So highlight them both, right click, and merge layers. All right, so that's gonna work now. So the next step, here is you actually want this picture to be behind the silhouette. So I'm gonna drag and drop there. So now the silhouette is on top, and then I'm gonna click on the silhouette layer. I'm gonna go up to the blending modes right here where it says normal, this drop down menu, and I'm going to choose screen. That's gonna tell Photoshop how you want to blend these two layers together. And you can see this is already turning out very cool, but you can see it's not quite there yet. If you look at the finished picture here, that we showed you before, this one isn't quite there yet. So to recreate that finished picture, we have to make these photos blend together a little bit better and also just give it a little bit more of a, a visual pop so that it stands out better. So to do that, I'm going to erase some of both of these layers, but I'm not actually going to use the eraser tool. I'm going to use a layer mask on each of these layers. So a layer mask basically is uh, you telling Photoshop what parts of the layer you want to show through and what parts you want to hide. So you do that by painting black and white over the layer and the black uh, hides it and the white shows it. So I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean. I'm gonna go here to the layer mask button. So it's right at the bottom here. And I'm gonna click that for the first layer, select the second layer and click that again. Now I have layer masks on both of these layers. You can see here, if you look in this little rectangle, it's completely white, which means that it's showing through 100%. Same thing with this one. Now, any black that I add, or even uh, any gray that I add, you know, a percentage of black, so let's say 50% black, that would be gray, um, that is going to reduce the amount of this layer that's visible. So I'm going to use that instead of erasing. Why am I doing that instead of erasing? The reason is because if you erase, let's just say 
you know, you're working on this for 15 minutes and, and 10 minutes from now, you're like, you know what? I made a mistake a little while ago that I don't really like. I want to go back. Now you're stuck hitting control Z over and over and over again, trying to undo all of the steps you did where when you're working with a layer mask, all you have to do, if let's say you paint some black to hide some of the layer, you just got to go over it with a little bit of white and it fixes the problem. So that's why we use layer masks instead of the eraser tool. So now I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm going to erase or, or hide to uh, kind of recreate that, that picture that we're trying to show you how to make. So to, to start, I'm gonna go and select my paintbrush tool. And I wanna make sure black is selected. Like I said, that's going to hide some of this layer. So I selected my paintbrush, black is the color, going to go up here and let's see, I have the brush size at 2000 pixels. That will depend on the size of the picture you're working on. Uh, but I have the hardness very, very low at 8%. So you want to keep the hardness low because that feathers out the brush. So it's not really harsh lines. Opacity is set to 15%. I have opacity low so that I'm just slowly working on the picture. I'm not doing too much at once. It makes it easier to have control and, and get the end result that you're looking for. So those are pretty good settings. I might adjust them in a little bit, but we'll start off with that. So to start, I'm actually going to be getting rid of some of this bottom picture, not the top picture. So I'm gonna select the layer mask, make sure you're not in selecting the layer itself, but the mask, and then you can go ahead and just start erasing some. So I'm just gonna, you can kind of see it working. Again, I have the opacity set to 15. I'll actually bump that up a little so you can see a little more what I'm doing but normally I would work with a very low opacity. So the more I erase there, the more it is uh, darkening this picture because it's revealing more of that with the, again, there's the screen blending mode. Um, so as I'm working in this layer, in the layer mask here, it is affecting how much of this other layer is showing. So I'm just gonna keep blending that till I think it looks good. I'm probably going to do some on them here too. Same thing over here. And I'm going to do some up in the sky. And I'm just going to keep going until I'm liking what I see. Um, let's see. How do we feel about that? Do we think that's looking good? I'm going to turn up my brightness. I have it down because of the reflection in my glasses. I'm actually going to do that a little bit. I'm thinking that's looking pretty good. So it's not going to look exactly the same because it's pretty hard to perfectly replicate something that you've done before when you're doing uh, just blending like this. But I think that's pretty close to the original image. You know, one thing that I might do here, I might actually make them a little bit brighter inside the silhouette uh, in the smaller picture. So to do that, I'm just gonna switch over to white and I'm gonna get rid of a little bit of the black that I added in this layer mask to make them pop a little bit more inside of the silhouette. So I'm actually going to lower my brush size to maybe, let's see, a thousand there. And I'll lower my opacity a little bit because I don't wanna do too much. All right, so I think that's pretty good. So that makes them pop a little bit more. So, you know, comparing it side by side here, uh, I'll, I'll put up the original image so you can see uh, what we're trying to recreate. That's pretty close. Again, it's not going to be exactly the same. You kind of have to play around it. There's a lot of trial and error. It's art. So you have to make it your own. As you play around, if you take a silhouette picture and you drop another photo in, you're going to have to mess around with blending different areas to see how you know some of this works together. But that's, in essence, how we do it. So just to reiterate the steps, you want to open the first photo, the silhouette in Photoshop. You want to drag in the second photo, and then you're going to mess around with the sizing and the position. You will switch the blending mode of the silhouette picture, which you have on top, the top layer to, I'll show you here, screen. And then it's just a matter of kind of erasing and, and blending as you see fit to make the two photos look good together. So we do that with the layer masks here, and then you just paint black to hide and paint white to show. And you just kind of 
use the paintbrush and mess around with it until it looks good. So that's the process. If you have any questions about it, make sure you drop a comment. We're more than happy to help. I know this can be confusing, especially if you haven't used Photoshop before. So we're more than happy to try to help. Even if we have to make um, more of a beginner's Photoshop tutorial, uh, just let us know if that would be helpful to you. And again, if you are not subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button, like the video, and we will see you in the next one.